Good afternoon, everybody. I'm delighted to welcome you this afternoon to the uh, IIEA webinar. Uh, we're particularly pleased to welcome uh, Mr. Hans Leutens, Executive Director of Frontex, which is the European Border and Coast Guard Agency. And he's been very good to take time out of what is indeed a very busy schedule, as we can appreciate, to join us this afternoon um, uh, for a discussion. Mr. Leutens will speak to us for about 20 minutes, and then we will go to the question and answer with our audience. And as usual, you'll be able to join the discussion uh, using the Q&A function on Zoom, uh, which you will see on your screen. And uh, again, also, as we usually request, uh, if you have questions to put, you will feel free to do so throughout the session as they occur to you. And we will come to you at the end uh, of Mr. Leutens' uh, presentation. A uh, reminder that uh, today's presentation is um, uh, and the Q question and answer session are both on the record. And please feel free to join using uh, the discussion on X, formerly Twitter, uh, and uh, using the handle at IIEA. Uh, I think it's true to say that every country in the world uh, is affected by migration. The countries where people are leaving uh, and the countries to which people are coming. Uh, and in this context, Europe has a particular drawing power, uh, not only an economic power, but also it has a, it's a space that has a rule of law uh, and, uh, and an appreciation and respect for human rights. So in his address to the IIEA, um, the director um, will discuss the challenges of integrating the management of the EU's borders. He will discuss Frontex's work in facilitating legal migration, preventing illegal crossings, and returning those who are not eligible for protection in the EU. And his remarks will also reflect upon the agency's work in fighting cross-border crime and counter-terrorism. And um, Mr. Leutens is particularly well qualified for this demanding uh, um, post as executive director of Frontex. Uh, before becoming the, um, the taking up his role in March uh, of this year, March 2023, he held positions as commander of the Royal Netherlands Marechaussee, the uh, National Guard and one of the police forces, uh, one of the two police forces in the Netherlands. He was also governor of The Hague. And at the Dutch Ministry of the Interior and Kingdom Relations, he has worked in several leading positions at the highest management level. Among others, he was a Director General in the Netherlands Tax and Customs Administration and Quartermaster of the Integrity Chamber in St. Martin. He was a Programme Director of the Reconstruction of the Windward Islands and a member uh, of the International Board of Auditors in NATO. Uh, I think, uh, as I've said, Mr. Leutens, your background uh, fits you very well for this incredibly demanding task. And we're really uh, looking forward to hearing you uh, talk about the challenges in European integrated border management. So I hand over the floor to you now and um, we're pleased, very pleased to hear. Thank you, Ms. Gross. And uh, in my address, I will stay a bit, let's say, we will walk um, uh, beyond uh, and, and across the borders. And of course, happy to um, answer any more specific question in terms of the situation on the border right now, but also uh, the way we Europe and Frontex in particular is responding to that. But for now, I would like to take you on a long walk, uh, a journey through our borders. Uh, it's not just a, any journey, but one inspired by an author, a favorite of mine, Mr. Rory Stewart, and specifically his book, The Marches. And in that book, he explores the borders and the borderlands between England and Scotland, uh, a place where, as you for sure know, his, history whispers from every hill and, and every vo valley. Just imagine walking a thousand miles like uh, Rory Stewart did. And along the way, he encountered everything from ancient standing stones to modern day soldiers. But what's most intriguing is how these borders, in one way, just lines on a map, tell us so much about who we are and where we belong. Exploring his own family's history, he also finds that the living borders don't just divide, but often they bring people and cultures together. 
borders aren't just lines drawn by governments. They are like living, breathing entities shaping our identities and communities. And in the marches, we see how the Scottish and English identities blend and blur along the border, creating a unique cultural tapestry. And Stuart's journey shows us that borders, those lines who seem to divide us, are in fact threats that weave us closer together. They are where stories and souls intertwine, creating a tapestry rich with shared memories and dreams. As you think about managing borders in our world today, let us remember the lessons from the marches. It's not about drawing lines. It's about understanding that each person on either side of these borders carries a universe with him, a universe filled with hopes, fears, and dreams. Now, let's take a new path on our journey where we move our focus to border management, a topic indeed that's more relevant today than ever, perhaps. When we think about managing borders, it's easy to picture fences, guards, and strict rules. But as Stuart's journey shows us also another side, it's about understanding the people and the stories that make up borders and borderlands. It's about respecting the past and the present, the visible and the invisible lines that connect us all. So let us continue our journey today with looking at the history of borders themselves and the story of Frontex, a massive European experiment to safeguard another massive experiment, the Schengen area. As we reflect on our collective European journey, let us delve deeper into the story of our borders and how we've managed them. For sure, for centuries, no, for millennia, borders have separated, have been fought over. Throughout history, borders have been more than mere lines on maps. They have been symbols of sovereignty, markers of identity, and often the front lines of conflicts. From the Roman times to the medieval demarcations between kingdoms, borders have defined not just nations, but the very fabric of societies, shaping trade, culture, and countless human, life, human lives. In Europe, borders have witnessed the rise and fall of empires, the birth of nations, and the shaping of history itself. They have been drawn and redrawn, expanding and contracting with the tides of power and the aspirations of people. The Peace of Westphalia in 1648, for instance, defined and redefined the concept of territorial sovereignty, laying the groundwork for the nation-state system we recognize today. These evolving frontiers were not just political boundaries, but also cultural and linguistic divides, influencing the way communities developed and interacted with one another. Back to now, back to the European dream. The modern European story begins not with barriers, but with a dream of unity. The Treaty of Rome in 1957 sowed the seeds of this dream by declaring free movement of goods person, services, and capital as foundational pillars of the European community. This marked a paradigm shift for the divisive history of borders to a future built on cooperation and open borders. It was indeed a bold step towards transcending historical divisions, embracing a collective identity, and forging a path towards a united, peaceful Europe. This vision set the stage for what become, would become one of the most significant achievements in our history, in our European history at all, the Schengen area. And it was in the 1980s that five pioneering member states, Belgium, France, Germany, Luxembourg, and the Netherlands, decided to create a territory with the, without internal borders. This idea materialized in the small town of Schengen, Luxembourg, where an agreement was signed in 85 followed by a convention in 1990. When the Schengen area came into effect in 1995, internal borders checks were abolished, creating a single external border. This was indeed a bold step, marrying the ideal of freedom with the need for security, as rules for border control, visas, and asylum became uniform across Schengen countries. But with freedom comes responsibility. The abolition of internal borders necessitated a stronger, more coordinated approach to managing our external borders. 
Recognizing that organized crime knows no borders, member states agreed on enhanced cooperation and coordination, police and judicial work, ensuring our internal security. It was this evolving landscape that led to the birth of Frontex. The journey towards Frontex began with the establishment of the External Border Practitioners Common Unit, a mouthful, formed by members of the Strategic Committee on Immigration, Frontiers and Asylum, the so-called SCIFA Committee, and together with the heads of the National Border Control Services. This unit then coordinated EU-wide projects and operations related to border management and laying the groundwork for a more unified approach. And that started in 2004. Then the European Union established the European Agency for the Management of Operational Cooperation at the external member, uh, borders of the member states of the European Union. Again, a mouthful, but more, more simply called Frontex. And this marked a transformative moment as Frontex would evolve from a coordinating entity into a robust operational arm of the EU. The regulation that brought Frontex to life was later repealed and replaced in 2016, further establishing Frontex as the European Border and Coast Guard Agency. The most recent amendment to the Frontex mandate in 2019 further solidified its role and responsibilities. Today, Frontex stands as a central pillar in the management of the EU's external borders and the fight against cross-border crime. It is a center of excellence, sharing intelligence and expertise, not only with EU member states, but also with neighboring non-EU countries affected by migratory trends and cross-border crime. The transformation of Frontex into a operational entity was further bolstered by the creation of the European Union's first uniformed law enforcement service, the so-called Standing Corps, part of Frontex. This core signifies a monumental step in our collective efforts to safeguard the Schengen area. Right now, thousands of officers performing tasks ranging from border surveillance to fighting cross-border crime actually embody the spirit of European cooperation. And they work hand in hand with national authorities, protecting not just our borders, but not our, just our borders, but the very essence of what it means to be European. When I took over the leadership post at Frontex in March of this year, I saw an organization that has been under some turmoil over its values. It was having a difficult time finding its compass, even as it transformed into the European Union's first and largest, sorry, largest agency. One that has also become the first truly operational one. Under this train, morale has suffered. So I had my hands full already on day one. But I was able to count on a staff committed to our mission. And together we have set clear and a focused vision for our, our agency. And this vision, deeply rooted in our commitment to Europe, is built upon five strategic objectives, each carefully constructed to steer Frontex towards a future where effective border management and respect for human rights go hand in hand. First and foremost, we are evolving from a mere supplier of resources to a partner for EU member states. This change signifies our commitment to working closely with each nation, understanding their unique values and collaborating to develop tailored solutions. We are not just providing tools, providing tools. We are forging partnerships based on mutual understanding and shared goals. In doing so, we aim to build bridges across borders, enhancing cooperation and setting common standards for border management. Our second objective is an intelligence-driven approach. Here, we are harnessing the power of data and information to make informed decisions. This is not about gathering knowledge for its own sake but about using insights to enhance our operations, to ensure that our actions are guided by clarity and purpose. By adopting this approach, we are better equipped to anticipate and respond to the dynamic challenges at our borders, thereby enhancing the security and the fluidity of movement within the Schengen area. Emphasizing our role as a law enforcement organization is another key aspect of our strategy. This is about embracing our responsibilities at the borders with professionalism and integrity. 
ensuring that our actions always align with the values of justice and human rights. We take this role seriously, balancing enforcement of laws with the upholding of dignity for all individuals. As guardians of Europe's borders, we are not only protecting territory, territory, but also the values and freedom that define us. Looking to, towards the future, we are committed to being a forward-thinking agency. This means embracing innovation, setting high standards, and continuously enhancing our capabilities. We are preparing for tomorrow's challenges today, ensuring that Frontex remains adaptable and resilient in an ever-changing world. Our focus on innovation extends to exploring new technologies and methodologies, ensuring that we remain at the forefront of border management practices. Finally, creating a positive and productive workplace is essential to our vision. We understand that the success of our agency depends on the well-being and engagement of our staff. We are committed to fostering and a supportive work environment where every team member can thrive and contribute to our shared mission. This involves not only professional development, but also creating an atmosphere where diversity is celebrated and every voice is heard. In addition to these objectives, we also are deeply committed to our humanitarian responsibilities. Our operations are conducted with the utmost respect for fundamental rights, ensuring that those in need of protection receive it. We work tirelessly to prevent the loss of life at our borders and in the seas, collaborating with member states and others to enhance search and rescue operations. In the spirit of Ferrari Stewart's book, we understand that managing borders is not synonymously with closing them. Rather, it's about ensuring a balance between security and the freedom of movement. These strategic objectives are the pillars upon which we build a stronger, more responsive Frontex. Together, they guide us in our commitment to safeguarding Europe's borders while upholding our humanitarian responsibilities. And with your, with your support, we will continue to serve Europe with dedication, adaptability, and a deep commitment to the principles that unite us. As we stand at the crossroads of history and hope, Let's return to the heart of our journey, the lesson from Rory Stewart's The Marches. Stewart's walk along the borders of Scotland and England reminds us that borders are not just divisions, but also connections. They are the canvas upon, upon which our stories are painted, where diverse cultures merge to create a richer, more vibrant tapestry of humanity. This understanding is the essence of our mission at Frontex to manage borders not just as barriers, but as bridges that bring us closer together, respecting both our diversity and our shared European identity. Our commitment at Frontex is not just about safeguarding territory. It's about safeguarding the ideals that define us as Europeans. We strive to balance security with compassion, control with coordination, always mindful that our actions at the borders echo throughout the communities we serve. The Standing Corps, with their diverse backgrounds and expertise, are not just enforcers of policy, but also ambassadors of a united Europe, a promise of what we can achieve when we stand together. As we look towards the future, we strive to embrace the potential of Frontex to transform border management from building new Hadrian walls that so fascinated Rory Stewart on his journey with his father into an act of unity, a celebration of our common humanity. Together, we can ensure that our borders remain open to collaboration and mutual understanding, continuing to weave the beautiful, complex tapestry that is Europe. Thank you.